Hi, good afternoon, ladies, to the gentlemen, to the boys, to the girls. I'm here at last. Hey, was you all worried about me? <laughs> well, here's my match review of um, Aston Villa 1, Arsenal 0. Um, not the best of games again. And uh, for me, well... We don't want to keep talking about another refereeing decision. But, you know, there was a moment where Lacazette got dragged down by Emiliano Martinez, our ex-goalkeeper. But um, the referee judged it to be Lacazette leaning on Martinez, hence the reason why Villa got the free kick. But that doesn't paper over the cracks. We will not make any excuses here. Villa were the better side. They've been a better team all season and... Um, they deserve the three points, you know. Cedric Suarez, what the f was he thinking of? Seriously. I'm sorry, but he, he has got to take a hell of a um, lot of blame for the goal that led to the, be the winning goal of the game. And Aston Villa had um, a lot of opportunities to kill the game off. And if not for Matt Ryan, we would have been put out of sight. <clears throat> so a big up Matt Ryan and his debut. It wasn't a winning debut. So we have to wait another seven days until we play Leeds United next Sunday. And we need to win that game. We need to win. We're in mid-table as it is and it's not looking good. We have another, what, 15 games left. Nah, we need to win this game. Other than that, yeah, first half against Villa, well, you saw the um, goal that um, decided the game itself. One minute, 15 seconds. Suarez is playing a short, um, light, light um, pass to um, Gabriel Magedis. He's expecting Gabriel Magedis to get that. What the fuck was he thinking of? What what is he thinking? What goes? What is he doing? I just can't get. And then um, you know, Bertrand try launches onto it, gets a right footed low crossing, and Oli Watkins does what um, all good strikers does, and that's strike the ball on target. All right, via the deflection. Question is, I think Rob Holding. Personally, I think Rob Holding could have got tight, but the question would be asked is. Can Rob Holden get a bit tighter? Yes. He's got to get a lot more tighter. You know, the risk is there for him to commit a, um, a foul that leads to a penalty, so be it. But he's got to get a hell of a lot tighter. For me, that goal just sums up, summarises our whole season you know, as a whole. Um, <clears throat> good football being played by Arsenal, but they were just too um, safe. You know, Bukayo Saka, he was kicked off the park. One from Kenza, where it could have been argued that Kenza should have been sent off. I'll let Ty deal with that one. And the other one, um, Nakamba gave um, Saka a kick in. But overall, it wasn't um, a good performance from the Arsenal at all. You know, we saw um, Arsenal in the second half improve, cr trying to create chances. But for me, Villa were always... Um, quite comfortable defending um, everything that we threw at them and rightfully so Tyro Mings was rewarded a BT Sport Man of the Match award because he was absolutely a colossus and a superb colossus at that beat but other than that we Arsenal have to go again and um, yet again I'm going to go for my um, player ratings in goal Matt Ryan I can't fault him for the goal. I can't fault him for anything. For me, he made two to three, if not four, good saves. And I'm going to give him a seven and a half on his debut. He deserves better. <sighs> right, the back four in front of him. Bellerin, five. Just simply not good enough. He'll never be good enough to play for this club. Mikel Arteta, I'm going to have a good go at him, you know. Seriously, I'm, it's getting to the point where I'm going to have a good go at him on the ba on the on the basis that he selects Bellerin ahead of Suarez in that position, 
And he, you know, oh, don't let me get me, don't get me started. <clears throat> he can have a five. He was defensively, def- I mean, offensively, he's running into midfield. You know, he's crossing is. He's cro- he's he's crossing is not too bad, but he does not pick out an Arsenal shirt. He just crosses it for the sake of crossing it offensively. Defensively, again, always in sixes and sevens. A five for Bellerin. Um Rob Olden, you can have a five. He looks all over the place during the game. Especially in the first half. He looks so all over the place. In the second half, well, didn't have um, that much defending to, to do as such. Well, he did. And um, he was always the wrong side of his opponent. That's one thing I noticed about Rob Holding. He never gets goal side of his opponents. Five. Gabriel Magalhães. Five and a half. He was okay. But not the best player in, on the pitch. Nowhere near the best centre half on the pitch. You know, Tyro Mings outshun him. If you're talking, if you're talking, if you're talking, it's um, on performance um, levels. Tyro means out him. So for me, Gabriel McGain is a six, and he did look a threat in set pieces, but <clears throat> there was nothing. I mean, defensively, he and the defense had an off day, so he's going to have. A f- you know what? I'm going to give him yeah five and a half for um, Gabriel McGain. Left back, he can have a two. Oh, absolutely shambolic this play in that position. You know, gave away the goal. I mean, he's the reason why we lost the game then, if the truth be told. His stupid pass allowed Bertrand Torreira to use the initiative, go around um, Gabriel, get a right-footed low crossing that led to Watkins scoring the winner, All right, be it def- a deflection. But for me, it, he shouldn't be playing in that position. You know, next game, I would rather see Bakayo Saka come out of that East position where he's been a star to go back to the left back until Tierney comes back. And until then, we've got to um, a compromise. And why, um, let, let me, um, why, yeah, why um, on earth would you let Mate the Niles go, um, go out on loan? He had one bad game in that position and then you decide to drop him. Yeah, he was um, obviously game rust. He was, um, what do you call it? He was lacking game fitnesses or match fitness, as they say. But yet, he gets dropped. But Suarez makes a stupid uh, mistake. A stupid back pass that had no weight on it to give it to Gabriel. That was just disgustingly shocking. He has a two. I mean, he's, he's done well in a couple of games in that position. But for me, this is not one of his best games. Suarez, two. All right, the midfield. Um, Partey. He wasn't. He wasn't poor, but he definitely was not at his best today. Um, he got booked, which is no fault of his own. But again, he did drive the. He did drive us on in the midfield. He tried to um, get us going, you know. Try to um, create something or get something happening or make something happen to the for the Arsenal, and he did his best in that sense. But for me, not one of his best games. At all, but he weren't the worst um, player for Arsenal. Six, Granit Xhaka. Um, he wasn't too bad as such. I didn't think he was too bad. He was competitive. He he tried to press and um, tried, to, and he played some good um, forward passes. Played a couple of good forward passes, should I say? I'm going to give him a six and a half. Right, the three in front of the two. Saka. Yeah, he was he was pretty quiet. I mean, he didn't really have an effect in the game. He's um, yeah, final ball in the final third was just woeful, to say the least. <sighs> didn't think he had. A, I didn't think he did enough in that game. I'm going to give him a five. Emil Smith Rowe, five for him as well. I'll, I'll have to say. Um, he wasn't the worst player on the pitch, but he definitely wasn't the best player on the pitch. Yeah, he didn't get on the ball as much as I would like to see him on the ball. And um, yeah, he didn't he didn't do enough to affect the game. Five. On the left, Pepe. Uh, another woeful game. Someone of his quality, his ability. 
for me. He got it wrong. All the, His final decision-making so shockingly diabolical. It beggars to belief. He can have a four. Because he knows he can do a hell of a lot better. And he's got the ability to do a hell of a lot better. Four. Uh, Alexander Lacazette. Um, five. You know, he was never... When, when the delivery was... Was there? I, where was he? He's meant to be that goal scorer. Where was he? He was more in a defensive midfield position than he was in a six-yard box, leaving in the inside eighteen. And for me, following Balogun is suffering the waiting game because Lacazette and the Abamyangs are not performing to their true potential and their ability. And Lacazette was woeful for me. Not good enough. Five. The substitutions, I'm going to come on to them um, soon. Um, oh, gosh. Give me a... Yeah, the substitutions. Let me let me go for it. Yeah, Martin Odegaard. Now, he came on and um, I don't think he did too bad. He came on for Suarez. Um, not much of an impact, but... Um, he played one good through ball to Nicolas Pepe. And Pepe's every touch allowed Minks to pull it out for a corner. That was at the business end of the game. Other than that, he had an opportunity for himself where he should have... Um, it was a good strike power-wise, but there was no accuracy. I'll give him a six. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Four and a half. There was no impact for him. He had he had the longest out of the three substitutions, and um, there was just no impact from from him. There was he was um, working hard. He wasn't, uh, and that could be said about Lacazette. His work rate was low. Um, didn't look like um, we were going to score, even with him coming on. And he didn't do enough. To, he didn't do enough to affect the game again. Four and a half. William. Oh, fucking hell. Excuse my language, but for fuck's sakes, this cunt should not be at the club. He sums up everything that is wrong with our football club in the last fucking 15 years. Oh. William. Give him a two. Just ineffective. Look, this he looked um, ineffective. Short of ideas. It was a it was a stupid decision by the manager to bring him on. I don't know why he brought him, why he brought him on when Gabriel Martinelli was screaming out to come on. I don't get that. He gets a, a two. I'm not a William fan at all. I want him. Oh, I want him. I don't want him even in the match day squads. Right. Um, that concludes um, my player ratings. Now I'm going to switch to the manager. He can have a four for me. Now, this is this is what I care. He picks Bellerin. He continues to pick Bellerin. Bellerin, who has been shocking for such a long time. And yet, he keeps picking him. Can someone tell me if he's got naked posters of Bellerin in his bedroom wall? Can someone tell me that um, Bellerin has got one over him? Or something. Something is going on and it's dodgy. How the fuck can he keep on picking Bellerin? Someone tell me. It's disgusting. For the fuck enough of it. We need a new right back in the summer, Mikel Arteta. And a left back. We need quality in those positions because we are looking so piss poor. With Bellerin operating at left right back, there's nothing there. Defensively, we we get nervous when you see Grealish's and uh, what not taking him on. He gets beat too easily. And offensively, if he's not crossing the ball, then he's passing it. And then when he's crossing, he's not looking. He, he never looks or checks to see if there's an opportunity for Lacazette to get in on the end of it because he's just totally... Shocking. And for you to keep picking him, I mean, that's just going to get you... 
that position alone, a player like Bellerin could get you into so much um, criticism and trouble. Well, should I say so much trouble first, then the criticism. And you're getting criticism where it, it's deserved. For me, you can have a four. You can have a four today. Um, the referee, oh, two. Maybe he should have spotted that. Maybe he should have gone to the VAR and spotted um, what Emiliano Martinez was doing to Lacazette in in a in the second half of that when the corner was coming in the in swinger. He should have gone there, but the Arsenal players didn't do. It. Oh, the Arsenal players didn't do um, Lacazette any favors by backing his um, plea for the referee to go and look at the monitor. Again, common sense and VARs come into question throughout the week. And yet again, it's the same situation. But other than that, I'll leave it as that. I can't have any excuses. We just have to look forward to Leeds United because we're out of our FA Cup um, tournament. And it is what it is. So ladies to the gentlemen, to the boys, to the girls, excuse the the rant and part of my language. So I apologize for that. I hope you've enjoyed um, my usual match review, player ratings, management and the ref. And I'd like to say thank you to you all for listening, for putting up with me, <laughs> for tuning in and um, watching. I'll be back later on this evening with another football content. And um, I hope you enjoy your day. I'm going to be out of here and getting ready to watch um, some football. Maybe um, the small matter of um, Liverpool versus Manchester City. That should be a cracking game. Other than that, um, mates, um, if, you've got an, if you've got an opinion, if you've got anything that you want to add to this, um, add to the um, match review in terms of my player ratings, substitutions, management, ref, leave it in the comment section below. Smash the thumbs up like button for me. And... Um, Please help me to subscribe to my channel. That's myself and I only DLG repping. And um, shout out to Robbie Lyle and these AFTV for 1 billion viewers. Shout out to Turkish. Shout out to Curtis who's doing his thing. Um, re of, um, re right, of, um, right now, maybe he's finished his um, streaming. Shout out to Xander Sportsman. And shout out to all you um, YouTubers. Who are doing your thing, yeah? Keep it going. And all I say is to you, YouTubers and anyone who's watching this, please um, smash the uh, thumbs up, like button, comment, and um, please help me by subscribing to my channel. Another 915 subs to go, and um, I'll be there. So enjoy. Peace again, love again, and bless again. Be nice.